Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Todd. Sassy's out front doing some gardening, and this is three days away. This is the spin-off of our barbecue channel, Greenhorn Barbecue and Beer, where we originally posted the original video a year ago of me making this generator quiet box. So if you guys want to see how I made it and a quick review of the generator, I'll leave a little link up here for you to go check it out before you watch the rest of this video. Otherwise, sit tight, pop a cold one, and uh, let's get on with the show. All right, so like I said, I built this a year ago, and one of the unfinished items that I had to do was come up with a more permanent solution to mounting the exhaust uh, out of the quiet box and uh, harmlessly away from that to keep some of the heat out of there. And so that's what I've been working on. It was pretty simple. Uh, really simple tools um, and just a couple brackets that I fabricated and I used the original mounting points on the chrome cover of the muffler which that chrome is really just cosmetic so there were four nice little screws there and I just instead of destroying that that nice little chrome cover I just reused the uh, mounting points on that so so I couldn't be more happy than the results that we had with this uh, generator quiet box. It really quiets it down a lot. Again, go check out the original video. This particular video is not about comparing the before and after uh, noise, but let me tell you, it did quiet down a lot. So today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna button this all up, run it, and put some wireless thermometers in there and get a graph of the temperature differences from the intake on this side and the exhaust on that side. And also I'm gonna have a probe for the ambient temperature inside the generator box. I'm probably gonna place it close to where the air is being exhausted from the box from that 700 and CFM, 750 CFM fan that I have. And uh, again, if you wanna check out more details on that fan, uh, I encourage you to go check out the original video. I will leave some links to those items that I used and a link to that video in the description. All right, I'm gonna get busy, button this thing up, get it started, and I'll meet you on the other side. All right, guys, what I'm using here for truth data, uh, telemetry, if you will, is this excellent uh, older fireboard uh, uh, Wi-Fi enabled um, cooking thermometer, and it has six channels, okay? So I'm gonna be using channel one for some truth data for the ambient temperature. Now, this is actually a meat probe, but it also, definitely can be used for just air temperature okay now to make sure that that's telling the truth i've got an old school thermometer here and as you can see in the beautiful coastal area of uh, south central california it's just a tick above 70 maybe right at 70 it's a beautiful day here light winds and uh, we're looking good now channel two is going to be this probe now you can see that it's different okay this is an ambient temperature probe and this one i'm just going to dangle in here about halfway in and i don't want to touch the uh generator itself but uh it's definitely going to uh pick up that temperature good um now maybe i could hang it through um generator a little bit and let it dangle right there uh, but it might be too close to the engine and really I'm looking for more of an ambient uh, temperature um, So I'm just going to Put it right about there now the weight of the lid isn't going to crush this because this is designed to go in and out of barbecue doors Smoker doors and things so it'll be just resting on top of that and as you can see it's just uh, Not quite touching the side Now channel three is going to be the same concept over there. You can kind of see that There it is, better shot of it. Now this is the uh, front end of the quiet box. There's the fan. Of course, I'm gonna be plugging the fan into its own power once it's started. Uh, and the exhaust is gonna be run out the side there and uh, up and out uh, harmlessly into the atmosphere. Uh, now again, guys, if you want to see the full video of me giving a review on this build here, uh, be sure to check out the actual introduction introduction video over at Greenhorn Barbecue Beer. 
Alright guys, I got everything started and as you can see it's really not that loud. Uh, honestly it sounds like uh, a toy hauler uh, Onan generator if you're standing on the generator side of the trailer. Um, that's exactly what I'm looking for guys. I know this size of generator you can't really truly get super quiet without a lot of a lot more effort than what I did but I think this is really good. So let's get to the temperatures I'm seeing. So right now, right at the beginning, I'm seeing about 86 degrees ambient outside temperature and that's in the sun on the inlet side. Just on the other side of that that wood on the inlet on the inside I'm seeing about 90, 91 and on the same compartment at the other end, the exit, I'm seeing about 110. Now that's that's not too shabby guys, that's like a hot day in Phoenix. Um, maybe an average day in Phoenix, Arizona, I don't know. But um, to me, that's pretty good because I'm running synthetic oil in that thing and I'm pretty sure it could maintain those temperatures for a very long time. So I'm not worried about those temperatures. Now on a cooler day, I would expect that to be a little bit less, but like I said, in the sun against that wood, it's uh, showing 86 degrees. Uh, let me show you where that probe is. And of course, in the shade, it's a whole 10 degrees less ambient temperature. So I think that's kind of interesting, the difference uh, between the uh, in the shade and in the sun. It's uh, kind of different. Alright guys, just so that you know, it's about 12.25, almost 12.30 in the afternoon right now. I'm going to go ahead and let this run for another hour, and then I'll uh, check back with you. Alright guys, while I'm uh, killing some time, I want to show you how one simple little trick will actually make this thing a little bit quieter and you don't have to go to the expense of buying a big old pre-made plastic shed. Check it out. Alright, I'm about 10 feet from it and that's the intake. This is a piece of plywood. There you go. So all I did was uh, prop that up there like that. And you know, the principle of sound is that uh, it has a hard time going through obstacles. Uh, so I could actually build a box over that intake and give it kind of a maze, if you will, of uh, the air coming in. Air has no problem really going through a few turns, okay? Sound does. Sound doesn't like going through those sharp turns, and as you can see, it makes a huge difference. Before, after. What do you think about that? And the same thing can be said with that exhaust side. Before, after. Right, guys one uh, little note about the fuel you use okay so I keep uh, about five gallon uh, jugs around uh, this one actually I think is a uh, six gallon actually so I keep about three or four of these around uh, and in order to keep it staying longer I use a fuel stabilizer like the Stabil you know you can use any number of products and uh, so I keep that around I go one further and uh, write the date. Let me see if you can see that. I write the date on a sharpie here so I know when that fuel was used. And you know, if you need to uh, refill it, then you just scratch it away and put a new date on there. It's as simple as that, guys. And if you have a car that takes 91 octane, 92 octane, or even a uh, razor, turbo razor like ours that needs uh, high octane, well, fill your jugs with that stuff, 
and uh, you know when you need to use some of that gas you can use it between platforms all right it's not gonna hurt the generator any I think it might even like that 91 octane but uh, if you run the stable and any other kind of uh, fuel stabilizer in all your jugs then when you go to use it every once in a while it'll always be in your generator as well so anyway that's just a little tip all right guys uh, one of the things I noticed uh, was these flaps were not all the way up and uh, and in an attempt to get the uh, temperature down a little bit I went ahead and propped this up here and uh, to, to the stops basically about as wide as they can go and uh, I've dropped about uh, well almost six degrees uh, in the uh, exit side of the box so I think that's pretty good so that's uh, probably one little thing you guys want to be uh, cautious of uh, is the power of that fan may not be enough to uplift those uh, veins uh, flaps or if you will uh, high enough to be 100% efficient so anyway uh, just thought I'd share that it's been a little bit more than an hour about an hour and a half now I'd say um, the temperatures come down outside a little bit maybe about five degrees or so uh, right now in the shade it's about 71 degrees and as you can see uh, hopefully you can hear it it's humming away uh, I could have a normal conversation with you right now um, I put some boards on there uh, as kind of a temporary measure just to experiment uh, I may build an actual uh, maze box you know comes off uh, those exhaust ports to kind of give the sound uh, blockage and this is something you could do just when you're going to use it you know uh, flat lumber is a lot easier to store than a box so so we started out about 125 on the exit side of the inside of the box and in about a half hour it started to shoot up to about 119 actually and I didn't get a screenshot of that one but it went up to about 119 and I'll show you a couple graphs of what I'm talking about here um, and then I was observing that the exhaust fan flaps weren't really fully opening and I think it's just because of the uh, the weight of them and the fan even though it's uh, adequate uh, CFM wise 750 CFM it wasn't lifting those up as far as they could go so I took a 2 by 4 that I happened to have lying around I propped it up and uh, lo and behold it brought it down to 109 degrees where it's pretty much stayed steady ever since uh, I've been letting it run a little bit extra long um, just to uh, see if it would indeed stay that way and yes it has stayed about 109 110 for at least an hour now um, so I'm really pleased with that now the uh, maximum continuous operating temperature for these things are about 130 uh, ambient temperature uh, that, that's pretty hot um, so I don't have a temperature on the engine itself uh, similar to like a car temperature gauge um, maybe I'll try that one of these days guys comment down below tell me what you think if you'd like to see that kind of test otherwise I'm just got the ambient and I think that's adequate anyway guys thanks a lot for watching be sure to subscribe and share this video and uh, be sure to comment what you think of this quiet box and again um, thumbs up much appreciated and we'll see you next time